Warrior Rewind. Welcome back. Alongside me is Natalie Linus. I'm Nate Straubinger. All right, guys, we'll start off with the Warrior golf team. They headed out to San Bernardino last Tuesday for the Coyote Classic. Connor Day shot a score of 212, but four extra strokes would give him the tie for fourth place for the weekend. Day also helped the Warriors earn fifth place overall. Anthony Mangare also finished in top 20, just 10 over par, and a score of 210. The Warriors will head to the NDNU Invitational at the Poppy Ridge Golf Club in Livermore on March 9th and 10th. Softball dominated in Carson last Friday with no outs in the fourth. Holly Mooring single scored two runs following a single from Dina San Luis and a double from Duke. A single by Jessica Verity on cat catcher's interference load up the bases for Kylene Begonia. Grand slam for the Warriors. Cassidy Duke added three-run homer to make it 9-2. to two. The Warriors ended the game with a mercy score of 10-2 to two against Dominguez Hills. But when the Toros came to Stanislaus on Saturday, softball team gave away their doubleheader 9-5 to five and 5-3. to three. Cal State Stanislaus is now ranked 3-9 and nine in conference play. One of the softball players was chosen at the standout athlete of the week. Ryan, go ahead and tell us who it was. What's up, Warriors? I'm Ryan McLaughlin, back with this week's episode of Warrior Standouts. This week, I chose to highlight softball pitching star Jessica Verity. Verity, otherwise known as the Jess, has pitched four complete games to go along with an impressive 328 batting average and two home runs on the season. We just want to stay positive and have great energy, come out playing hard, and not playing down to people's levels. And we also want to, our goal is to not leave runners on base, so the more runs we score, the better chances it is for us to win. The Warriors will face off against a tough conference opponent in Chico State this weekend for a four-game series, and we'll be looking to string together a couple of important wins. Good luck out there, Warriors. Back to you guys. Yeah, the Jess has been dominating this season. Yeah, with a 416 average and two home runs over the series, she's definitely the best choice for the standout player of the week. Well, baseball also took on Dominguez Hills last weekend with an 8 to 5 win, followed by a 7 to 3 loss to pick up the split. Nick Bumard took the mound alone in game 2, pitching a complete game for the Warriors. His defense turned two double plays and helped shorten the game. Bumard struck out four batters and allowed just two runs off eight hits. But when facing the Toros on their home field, CSU Stanislaus gave up three errors and lost 7-5. The track and field team was home for the first of two consecutive home meets this past weekend. For the women, it was Lindsay McKee and Crystal Allness who hit provisionals in the hammer throw. McKee, who had also provisionally qualified in the indoor weight throw, won the hammer throw, followed by Allness, who came in second. Allness would go on to take first in the discus toss. Turlock native Sierra Booz finished second in the long jump, while Leah Butler took second in the pole vaulting event. Finally, on the track, the Warriors' top finish came from Kyra Vaughn, who won the 1,500-meter run in a time of 4.52. Here's what she had to say to Rita. Hey, Warriors, I'm here with Kyra Vaughn, um, our new transfer student. She typically runs the 800, and she ran the 1500 today. And not only did she PR, but she got first in her race. And not only, you know, this being the first meet of the season, how do you feel that you're going to, like, the future races are going to be like for you? Um, since I started off with a good time for the season, I just really want to progress from here and PR and get better and better. And by the end of the season, I really hope to run under 440. Oh, wow. And then in my 800, I want to get, like, a 212. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, considering that 800 is your normal thing, do you think now you have a better, um, like, better advantage now for the 800? Oh yeah, definitely. Because with the 15, it's just three and a half laps, and 800 is only two. I just I know how to pace myself better, and when I run 800, I was like, oh well, it's not compared to 15, it's just yeah. two laps, so it'll be easier. Well, not easier, but I will be able to handle it better. Awesome. Thank you so much, and good luck for the rest of your um your races. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The men also had their day at the Stanislaus Open as well. The Warriors finished second through the fourth in the 3,000 meter run as they were led by senior Alex Villasquesa. But it was Gary Randall who hit the NCAA Division II provisional marks in three events as he has already put himself on the national watch list in hammer throw, shot put, and discus. Randolph started the day with a third place finish in the hammer, in the hammer throw followed with a win in the shot put event and rounded out with a third place throw in the discus event. Making his first appearance on Warrior Rewind, let's check in with Gary. Hey Warriors, I'm here with Gary Randolph, one of Stanislaus' newest throwers, and he's hit two provisional marks today at Stanislaus' first track meet. How does that make you feel being one of the newest throwers here on the team? Uh, it feels good to just come out, you know, and, uh, and start off big. 
start the season off big. And that's great, Gary. Uh, hitting two provisional marks this early in the season must be big for you. How did you how did you prepare prepare for this? Um, well, just off season training was uh, really tough, and then uh, just worked really hard, you know. So now that you've hit two provisional marks, the chance you can go to nationals. How do you how do you plan to get ready for nationals and score points for Santa Claus? Uh, just keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, we'll see how things go. Hey, that's great, Gary. Good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. And that's it here at Santa Claus Track Meet. Women's tennis had a close competition on Friday against Dominican. Annalisa Tallis was able to put away Vicari in the decisive singles match to get the Warriors out of a tie for the win 5-4. Unfortunately, the rain cut out our women's team short the following day, resulting in a 5-1 defeat to UC Riverside. Our only point came from Joanna Diamond. The Warriors will travel south next weekend to face UC San Diego and Grossmont Junior College. Check out this clip following Friday's matchup. Hi Warriors, I'm here with Varric Visaraga. All right, Varric, so tell me, did you girls, how did you girls prepare for the five to four, five to four win today? Uh, it made a big difference. Uh, we played a match that was a tough one uh, up in San Francisco on Sunday, and uh, we kind of got back together and did a little different, just even the cheers and just uh, a little bit of um, some soul searching. I think it made a huge, huge difference with all the girls. So um, it was. Just, you could just feel the camaraderie as well as just the spirit out here. It just made a huge, huge difference. And most of the thing we're looking for is just home court advantage. And today was definitely the difference that made the deciding match for us. Both basketball teams hosted their last weekend in the regular season last Friday and Saturday. The women's basketball team kept up with the CCAA leading Team Cal State East Bay. Alyssa Valentine's three points had the Warriors behind just one point until the final timeout. When Pioneers took a 6-0 lead, Valentine finished the night with 16 points, 6, six assists, and 2 steals in the 74-68 game. But for the very last game of the season on Saturday, women's basketball went out with a bang over Cal State Monterey Bay. Senior night featured the lone senior, Brianna Cotton, along with 4 more players netting double digits. For Brianna, she placed 6 on the Stanislaus Career Top 10 list, with 961 career points. The Warriors took off in the first half with a 35-9 lead and were unstoppable at the arc. Camille Roberts nailed five three-pointers, leading our Warriors with 17 points, and Alessania Whitney had 12. Lexi caught up with Cotton after the game. Anna Cotton, number 12. What would you say is one of your best memories in the season with this team? Um, just all the hard work we've put in this season, you know, our record doesn't necessarily, you know, show how hard we've worked and just all the memories that we shared on road trips, um, you know, in the hotel rooms, all our jokes, it's just been a lot of fun this year and that's what I'm going to take with me. Well, that's really fun, that's exciting. The men's offense came back to life and scored over 70 points for the first time in 10 games on Friday and then scored over 80 points on Saturday in the game against Cal State East Bay. The Warriors did not disappoint with a 77-63 victory. Four of the seven seniors put double digits on the board, led by Chris Reed with 19 points, Wes Bartol and Rob Walters with a double-double, and Tyler Barber with 11 points. Saturday night's game featured seven senior Warriors in the watch against Monterey Bay. The Warriors shot 52.6% that night and were led by Chris Reed with 22 points, followed by Rob Walters, who chipped in 14 points and 14 rebounds. Otter stayed in the game without much contact at the arc, but Alec Carlson's nine-point response kept the Warriors ahead when in need. The Warriors will take a three-game winning streak into the CCAA tournament against the UC San Diego as a fourth seed. Let's see what County got from Chris Reed and Rob Walters. Hey Warriors, I'm Andrew County here with Chris Reed and Rob Walters for Senior Night. Who's special for both you guys? Besides tonight being Senior Night, how do you guys stay motivated going into the tournament coming up for next week? Um, staying focused, staying hungry, and uh, staying together as a team. You know, our defense has led us, and that usually leads to offense. So definitely a defensive focus coming in this week, the practice heading into Thursday. Yeah, I mean, Rob pretty much nailed it. Uh, staying focused, staying hungry, and just being together as a family. Uh, one player can't do it, and these last two days, all of us have done it together. So. We just got to keep going forward. Speaking of together, they have hot three-point shooting tonight. So when they're hot on the three-point line, you guys are still making buckets. How difficult is it to keep the team motivated and keep you guys rallying to the end? 
Um, it, it can get tough because, you know, it gets frustrating at times when they're hitting crazy threes, you know, hands in their face, uh, just contested tough three shots. But uh, if we just continue to stay focused and work on our defensive principles and not worry about what they're doing, we, we usually come out victorious. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, our confidence was never down. If they hit a three, they hit a three. Um, we knew we could score at any time, and we just put our mind to it to get stops, and that's when they missed. Um, any team can hit. Really, they just had their night and they were hitting. So, uh, motivation-wise, we just keep uh, each other positive. Thanks, County. Well, that's going to wrap up this week of Warrior Rewind. Be sure to check us out next week. Like our Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. We're out there, Warriors. We'll see you next time. <laughs>